today I'm off to see my family and it's a three hour drive and I'm going to go in the Fiat 500e. It's about 165 miles there and let's see what we've got on the range meter. We have 161 miles on the range meter at 100%. Clearly I'm going to have to charge at some point. If I try and do it in the navigation in the car, is it going to tell me where I need to charge? So it knows that I need to charge to get to the destination but it's not actually going to tell me where I should charge and it's not going to plan the route for me. Most EVs don't do this anyway. Very few do. Tesla's the one that I always talk about. That's the exception that does it perfectly, but most cars do not. So you see I've got a camera set up there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try different navigation uh, apps. I'm going to look at a better route planner, which is the one I generally use. We're going to have a little look at Pump, which is one that um, doesn't get very much coverage, but it's, it's pretty good. And I'm going to look at PlugShare, Shell Recharge, and WhatsApp. And I'm sure there's others as well. Anyway, we'll do a little click around of apps and I'll show you how each one works to try and find a charger. Now, because I've got a car with Onto, I've got these little charge cards here. And that means that I'm going to prioritise Shell, which it says Shell, but it's actually MFG, Ionity, lots of others. Uh, BP, which generally I avoid, to be honest, although it worked the other day when I tried it. Um, and Intervolt, which works every time, in my experience. So I'll kind of prioritise those networks, but um, let's just get going and see what happens. So I think we're all ready to go. And I'll reset the trip meter. So first of all, I'm going to go to CarPlay and I'm going to do a better route planner. Search, so Wimborne. Now this is going to tell me where I need to charge. So it's saying to charge up here, that's an Alago charger. A Lego, Alago, I still don't know how to say that. So it's gonna tell me to go there and charge for 13 minutes. It knows I'm starting with 100% and it says I'll get to the charger with 30%. What it says is there are two chargers there. One of them's out of action completely. The other is in use, I think, at the moment. Hopefully it won't be in use by the time I get there. 96 miles there. Forget Sherpa, uh, there's range mode or normal. Uh, normal is really best for the motorway, but range is one pedal driving. So what I'll do actually is I'll be on range mode until I get to the motorway and then I'll change to normal. It would be a whole lot more fun for me taking these bends if I didn't have a camera on a tripod at the back. So this is, I would say, the problem with a better route planner, is that it, it does often tend to send you down roads where you probably wouldn't want to go normally. This is, you know, this is not a great road. Maybe it's shorter, perhaps it's a more direct route, but it's, it doesn't feel very much quicker. And perhaps it's also prioritizing a more efficient route, maybe. But yeah, I would rather just go on the main road, really. You have loads of options with a better route planner when you're using the app, but not when you're using the CarPlay interface. So it's probably better most of the time to use the app first and get the route sorted out in that, and then use CarPlay if you want. Okay, that seemed like a hell of a long way just to get to this roundabout. Turn anyway. left to M2 towards London, then keep slight left at the fort. So I'm going to turn on cruise control at 72 miles an hour, which I think is about 70 GPS, isn't it? Yeah, there we go, 70 GPS. Now obviously what would be nice when you've got navigation like a better route planner is you would like it to know the exact battery percentage, wouldn't it? That would be good. Because at the moment, all it's doing is guessing based on me leaving home with 100% battery and what it thinks I might have now. Now, what would be nice with a better route plan is if I could actually change what the percentage of battery um, was right now. Because at the moment, I've got 65% battery and this thinks I should have 68%. So it would be nice, wouldn't it, if I could click and then actually tell it what I've got but I can't. There's no way I know of without going to the app. And obviously I'm not going to start using my app while I'm driving. So there is a way of getting your exact battery percentage into a better route planner and pump the other app I was talking about. And that is by using a dongle, an OBD dongle. And the OBD port is something that every car has. And if you plug something into that, then what that does is it can give live data to your route planning app. And that way it knows your exact battery percentage and it can tell you where to charge exactly when you need it instead of just using guesswork like it is now. So that's really good. Now unfortunately in my case I'm driving a car with Onto 
and onto use the OBD port because um, they, I imagine they send data back and forth and they've got a webcam up here, a dash cam. They've got a dash cam up there um, that's linked into it. So you can't actually use the OBD port on one of these cars with onto, but uh, if you get a car in with any other means, then yes, you can use your OBD port provided there's no dash cam plugged into it. Now looking at this, I mean, I've been driving for an hour now and it still says that one is occupied. At least I think that's what it means when it's gray. I think it says one is occupied, one is broken. So I'm not even convinced this is the best charger to go to. So again, with a better route planner, it would be nice, wouldn't it, to be able to choose a different charger. So if I click on here, you can, you can see that you do have some other options here. There's a tiny button there if you press and it says loading alternatives. But this is alternative routes. It's not alternative chargers. Um, so that's the problem. So I, although I can go to alternatives here, I can click this one here and I can click oops, that one there. But that's actually alternative routes, it's not alternative charges. Weirdly, this is on, it's saying no charges, but obviously I don't want to do that, do I? So I still want that one. Anyway, so, just a little bit more control on a better route planner would be nice while I'm driving along. Now this is saying there is a 14 minute faster route. No, I think that was the one I was already on. Okay, but here we go. <laughs> so now it thinks I'm starting again from 100%. It thinks that I've charged up already and I'm now at 99%. I don't know what it thinks, but but here's the, that's the problem, you see. It's um, a glitchy, pretty glitchy app. And it's a shame because a better route planner is so good. I've, I've used a better route planner so many times on all my long journeys. But as you can see, while you're driving along, and it's not good to be doing all this when you're driving anyway, is it? But while you're driving along, you see, I mean, now I can't, I can't say, wait a minute, you know, I can't write in, actually, I've got 62% because there's no way of doing it. There's a little cog button up here. If I press that, then I don't have any options there. So if the people who make a better route planner are watching, I would love to be able to just click that and then type in the battery percentage. Now obviously it would be easier just using an OBD dongle, but I don't have that option here. But what we can do is we can go to an app like PlugShare. PlugShare is really good for finding chargers when you're on the go. So if you know what route, you can't actually do any route mapping in here. But what you can see is there are like two chargers there, for instance, I've just driven past at the services. So while you're driving, it pops up it with the different charges that are available. And you see that the more I zoom out, the more you see. So if you're really desperate for a charge, this is a really good way of finding a charger. So that's PlugShare, and remember that PlugShare works all over the world. If you're in the UK, then you can use also WhatsApp. And WhatsApp looks practically the same actually as PlugShare, and it works in the same way as well, really. So. If I click on that to get my location, then it says, just like PlugShare did, it says nearby chargers, Road Chef, Clackett Lane. I can't actually see what direction I'm going, annoyingly. I don't know if I click that twice, does it do it? No, it doesn't. So, yeah, I can't see which way I'm going. But anyway, and then we've got Shell Recharge. Like, the, like those other apps I just show you, Shell Recharge um, shows you the chargers that are in your area. Obviously with Shell Recharge, it will just show the ones that are on the Shell Recharge network. Which is fine for me because I do have a card. But it's still pretty good. I mean, I'm still, I've still got a good amount of chargers I can go to. And actually in general, their app is quite slick, weirdly. And I hate to say that because, you know, Shell is a big oil giant and um, I don't like it very much. As you can see from here actually that it's got Shell Recharge which is obviously their own and it tells me here that there are three available for instance. It also gives Genie Point because they uh, you can also use Genie Point with them 
and Mer, M-E-R, Mer, I think that's how you say it. But if I were to click that, it tells me the cost and it tells me what's available there. And I can navigate to it. But, you know, for the moment, I've just got to navigate somehow, so I'm going to use Apple Maps. And you might be thinking, Apple Maps is rubbish for finding charges, but here's the amazing thing, right? I found this the other day and I didn't know about it. If you click that and you go to add stop, look at that, charging stations. And I find this odd because it doesn't know that I've got an electric car. Anyway, if you click that, the interface is actually really good. There we go, see it zooms out, it, it tells me where the destination is and it tells me how many charges are on that route. I mean, that's really good. It doesn't know that Charge Your Car is pretty much the worst network, so it's showing that. But hey, it's just, you know, got BP Pulse 13 miles away. And it also tells you how much it's going to add. So Charge Your Car will only add four minutes onto the route. But Alago, I think that's probably the one that I was going to before, adds 10 minutes onto the route. and you see it keeps refreshing as we're going along. So this really surprises me. That's a really impressive interface, I think, that Apple have done. It would be lovely if it knew what my car battery percentage was, and it actually told me how long I had to charge for and all that sort of stuff. Um, which I think it might do on some, is it maybe the Ford Mustang? Maybe? But, um, but that is really good anyway. So what you can do is if you're desperate for a charge, you can use that. Or in fact, in my case, if you know that you're not going to get to the destination without Stay charging, right three lanes. then you can use this as well. And you'll see here, we've got Ionity adds three minutes, and that's 15 miles away, and GridServe, so it's got the big ones like Ionity and GridServe and things like that. So, it's a really good interface. So what I'll do, I mean, in fact, I probably will just select it anyway, because I know it's good. So there we go. Ionity at Cobham, which is the one I always tend to go to, add stop. Your next stop is Ionity. Now, obviously, what this not, isn't going to tell me is how long I have to charge for and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it's not brilliant in that respect, but if you've been driving on the motorway for a while, the, uh, the GOM, the range meter, will have a pretty good, accurate idea of how many miles you've got. So it says at the moment for me, it says I've got 64 miles um, of range. So that's going to be pretty accurate, really. So ordinarily, if I was not driving, of course, I, was, I would use ZapMap to find out the status of a charger, but I don't have that luxury. So what I'm going to do is go to Shell Recharge to see if I can do it while we're driving along. So that's where Ionity is there. So it says there are two out of six available. Doesn't tell me much more than that, but two out of six are available. So there's a fairly good chance that I'll get a charge when I get there. I was actually there the other day, just a few days ago, and there were two available then, and unfortunately they were both free. I say unfortunately because they were slow. When Ionity is free, that's kind of a bad sign. It means it's going to be really slow. Okay, start. Oh god, it's on free vend, isn't it? It's going to be slow. So in theory, that should go to 85 kilowatts, but we'll see. Okay, well, I've got my coffee and some cookie thing, whatever it is. So I've been in 10 minutes and just 5 kilowatt hours. It is not very quick, really. So I'm going to try and move it over there. Really? So this one's free as well then. So two of them at the moment are free of charge. And they're the two that I've tried. The others are occupied. So sod that. It's going so slowly. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get on my way, I think. Otherwise it'll be late to my meeting. So I'm hoping that they've fixed it now. Or I'm hoping that the two that are slow are being used by other people. Take the exit, then keep right. I'm busy today. Now, there's an eye pace there. Are they just waiting? Are they kind of queuing, maybe? Is that a sign that it's not working properly, or what? 
So I've got to Ionity um, with 43% battery and that's 54 miles left to go. And there's actually 92 miles to get to home, so um, I don't have to charge up that much. But the problem is, all the charges are taken at the moment. So even though I checked on the app, they're all taken. Unless two of them have reached 100% and people haven't moved them. There's another Fiat 500e from onto there. So I just went out and looked and the Fiat 500e is the guy sat in there and he's at 99% at the moment so he's obviously waiting to get to 100 and this is no, he's just disconnecting now so I'm going to reverse straight into that spot please don't be free okay let's see what we get the charge rate is 85 kilowatts maximum but we're not going to get that I think because we're not low enough on a state of charge so it's probably going to be around 50 something kilowatts I think I think I hope I hope it's more than that yeah 28 kilowatts is not great that's what I was getting the other day I think on the free one anyway I'm uh, I'm gonna go in and get coffee I really don't like the way you gotta lock this because it gives you no feedback. It just kind of flashes the light, but doesn't do much else. Anyway, in there it says 36 minutes to 80%, but I don't want to be here that long, really. Look at that, MG4, very nice. If you want to get an EV at the moment, an MG4 is a really good bet, or an MG5. Love that orange. So they've also got chargers here, the grid serve ones, but they're always busy as well. I mean, the thing is, it's absolutely packed here today, so it stands to reason the chargers are going to be packed as well. Three toners. <laughs> okay, so I've got my coffee and I'm going to head back to the car. Oh, Cooper Bourne. Very cool. So many EVs everywhere, aren't there? The charge speed is still really low. You know, 16 minutes to just get eight kilowatt hours not great but could be enough to get to Wimborne so I might leave soon anyway so we're on 65% which is 87 miles so I've only got just enough I really need to stay for longer so it's really unfortunate this is going so slowly it's just a bit of a silly situation because we've got one two three four five six cars I think here charging and people are sat in the driver's seat for in most of these cars and that shouldn't be the way it works it should just be that you go into the services you come out and your car is pretty much finished and then maybe you wait for another 10 minutes or so and that should have been what it was for me i mean i how long did that take 16 minutes was it wait going into peeing getting a coffee coming out took ages and really the car should have had enough i think by then for me to have gone out so it's not an issue with the cars so much i don't think the cars are the problem really it's the infrastructure more than anything I mean, if, there are a couple of cars here that um, charge relatively slowly. The e Nero over there, for instance. But um, it shouldn't really be a, it shouldn't really be an issue, unless everyone is just charging up as much as they can to get on with their journey, which is possible. Anyway, it's fine. I'm in a warm car. I don't care too much. I'm in a warm car and I've got my coffee. But um, you know, it just means that I'm now going to be probably half an hour late and, and won't get to parents at 4 p.m. I'll probably get about half past four now. It's fine as long as there's no traffic. It should be 10 to 80 percent in 30 minutes but instead it was 45 to 80 percent in 30 minutes. It's just frustrating isn't it? There we go five minutes to, for two percent battery. If I was in a petrol car I would have filled up my tank in the time it takes this to do two percent but I just need to stress it's not the car it's the charger. Okay, I think that'll do, so let's just stop. Okay, so here we are with 118 miles. All right, 92. Proceed to the route, 90, then turn right. Yep, oh, stop, stop. 92 miles then, and we've got 118. So, we should be all right. Okay, so I'm here. 12% um, battery and 17 miles left on the range meter. So, I'll have a think tomorrow about where I'm going to charge, but it's it's fine. I've got to meet my friend tomorrow morning, and that's seven six, seven miles away or something like that. So um, I can probably just charge around there. Um, but anyway, for now, 
I'm going to have a lovely Chinese meal with my folks who I've not seen for years. Good morning. Right, I'm off to meet my friend in 40 minutes. He lives about 11 miles away and I've got 17 miles on the range meter. Now actually, since I've been doing motorway journeys all this time, actually that's probably, you know, I'm probably going to be fine to get there. But it doesn't leave very much allowance does it if I get there and then there's a charger that's not working that's no good so I'm just going to try and find a charger just for a little top up around this area the first stop I think I'm going to try just going up the road to my old school because I've got a rapid charger there but I looked on zap map and it says it might be just open during school hours and obviously it's Sunday so school's not open but they do have a gym up there so maybe it'll be open anyway I'm going to give that a go just out of curiosity and then failing that there's a couple of other options one is one in, one's in the car park a myrrh charger in a car park and then there's another one in a pub but before I do that I'll just show you so here's the map and it says low battery level find a charging station yeah here we go so it does have the ones that I was talking about um I think I think that's my school that one there so if, if I select that yeah let's try that then UX 300e you don't see many of those around okay well I'm here well this is the lowest I've got the charge in the Fit 500e so you get this lovely flashing red light it also came up with some warning thing saying some things will be unavailable because your charge is too low. I didn't catch it, unfortunately. But anyway, um, so we're at BP Pulse Charger. So let's try this card. Plug-in ba vehicle for battery conditioning. Right. So 10% battery, that just said then. Okay, well, I'm gonna say member. Um, card has been verified. Yes. All right. I think it's good to know that chargers go through a process like this. So it's, I like having all these ticks. Okay. Now this is just a 50 kilowatt charger. So I'm not expecting any great speeds or anything. And in fact, annoyingly, it doesn't tell me the speed at all anyway, which is a shame. And it doesn't inside the car either. What a beautiful little car that is. Look at it. I'm just going to stay here ready for, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe, just to charge up a little bit. Maybe a bit longer than that. But um, weird being back at school. Here it is, my old school. QE School in Wimborne. I have a few memories from QE School in Wimborne. Don't think, don't think any of them were very good. It's fine. It was an okay school. Just a big school, you know. The moment you get to the big school, it kind of everything feels a little bit less fun and special, doesn't it? Apple Maps just came up with a message that said low EV battery, find a charger. Really? I mean, how did that happen? It's, that's new, isn't it? So, um, so earlier when I was navigating in Apple Maps and I thought, well, isn't that strange that EV chargers are shown? It does actually know that this is an EV. But it, why can't it tell me what my battery percentage is if it knows I've got low battery, you know? But that's still, I mean, that's something anyway, isn't it? Um, so it must be that with wireless CarPlay in here, it must be telling the, it must be telling CarPlay that I have a low battery. So it, it's doing something. It just it needs to do the whole route planning thing, doesn't it? Um, but still, I'm quite impressed with that. You know, Onto said I could choose whatever colour I wanted, and I went for white because you know we used to have a white Fiat 500. But my God, look at the dirt. Maybe I should have gone grey. And just to say that they do also have two AC chargers here as well. So if you're going to be here for a while, you can plug into there. As I said, I've still no idea what speed this charger is, and I can't do maths quick enough to work that out from there, but 3.7 kilowatt hours and 10% in six minutes. What do we think? That's got to be, that's got to be getting the full 50 kilowatts, I would have thought, that this charger can do. So that's the second BP Pulse charger I've used in the last couple of weeks. 
and it works absolutely fine. So maybe the network isn't quite as awful, as absolutely dreadful as it has been in the past. Maybe they've been making some improvements. Uh, let's stop. Oh, get your card ready and press this button. Card is ready. Again, that's a... There we go. Again, that's a good system, I think. You can press stop, but you do have to show your card, so at least people can't uh, just stop your charging session. I know I say it like every time, but I hate these things. Does that go like that? Yeah. Let's throw that in there. So 28%. 37 miles. Okay, and I'll reset the trip meter there. Proceed to the route. Then turn right onto Blanford Road. So it's 9.8 miles actually. I've got plenty of range. I'm going to change the route to a, I think it's Waitrose. There's a Waitrose near there that's got a shell recharge, um, which I can use with my free charging. Um, that's got a charger there so I can charge there while I'm in Mark. Uh, yes, yeah, so I know I'm too much. Right, I think it's that one there. No, it's not. <laughs> Oh god, I'm in Bournemouth. I'm in Bournemouth, I want to be in Paul. Uh, that's... That's it, isn't it? That's it, there we go. Um, that one there? No, that one there, Waitrose, there we go. Waitrose, no, you'd think if I, I could just click on that, right? Um, I think it's Shell Recharge, you know. Navigate. Apple Maps. And navigation. Go. Goodbye school. I hope I don't have to see you again for another 20 years. Alright, so we got here with 20% battery. Um, so I'm going to plug in and... I don't know how long I'll be here for actually, but um, I'll plug in and until it charges up. So here it is, a shell recharge. Rapid charge. Oh, it's up to 120. Ah, but look, they've also got, they've also got that. Now, since I don't know how long I'm going to be here for, and I don't want to be blocking someone else who might need that urgently, I'll probably plug into that instead, actually. They did have some BP Pulse ones over there, but they've been taped up, so they're not working anymore. Wait, tries to have a deal with Shell, you see. So, uh, yeah, so what I'll do, I'll plug into that over there. I think that's, I'll, I'll feel a little bit happier, I think, doing that. This is a bit of a novelty for me because I never slow charge when I'm out and about. I always do rapid charging. So, here's my cable. Okay. Now, there's a little RFID thing here, I think. That's my guess. Simple as that. It says three hours, 20 minutes to 100%. The car charges up to 11 kilowatts, but these are 22 kilowatt chargers, these. Okay, right, now I'm gonna meet my friend Mark. I've not seen him in ages. This is Mark. Hi, I'm Mark. So it's 11.18, I come back to the car. I've unplugged now. And I got 67%. So a lovely time catching up with Mark. And now I'm going to see my brother back in Wimborne. Um, parked next to a Ionic 5. That would be a perfect two-car garage, I reckon, to have an Ionic 5 and a little Fiat 500e like this. I do think the sat-nav actually in, in the Fiat 500e is really good. You know, it's nice and clear. It's easy to use. It's great. Okay, I'm back home and we've got 60% battery and 78 miles on the uh, GOM on the range meter. 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour is not brilliant efficiency really. I mean, I do have the heating on, but um, even so, it doesn't seem that good really. Given it's a small car, now I'm gonna have a brisk walk into town and meet with my brother, Chris. Okay, I have a lovely lunch with Chris and the family and I'm gonna go back home now. Let's turn on the car and uh, we'll try and use pump then. So if I go to CarPlay and we go to Pump, go to search, history, Ooh. so 
I'll get to Ionity with 12%, that's saying. Well, it doesn't know what battery percentage I've got at the moment, and I don't think I can tell it, so I'm not going to be able to go to Ionity. So what I'm going to do is use the app. It says start with 90%. Well, I'm going to change that to start with 60, which is near enough what I've got. I've actually got 59. And that's saying to charge here. Oh God, that's actually saying I need to charge twice. Right, oh, lovely, okay. So there's Allego Hypercharger. Um, it's saying I need to charge there for a bit. All right, well, let's do what it says then. So now if I go to the screen here, then you'll see that it's automatically got that. I mean, that's, this Allego one it only has one charger there. So, I mean, obviously if someone else is using it, that's not much good, but still, let's go. So I'm just about to drive past the services. So obviously you might be thinking, why am I not just stopping at the services? Well, the problem there is the pump doesn't want to take me there, I think, because the charges are only 50 kilowatts. So that's not getting the optimum speed for this car. So I think that's probably the reason why it's avoiding them. But um, obviously, you know, if I wanted an easier life, then it's obviously easier to stop at the services instead of taking a bit of a detour. So whatever one this is going to send me to. Um, one, of the, one of these days, obviously, all the services are going to be upgraded and they'll all be great and have loads of fast chargers. So when that happens, that'll be fine. But until then, um, it's playing a little bit of a game of hunt with fast charger. In half a mile, take junction 13. I really don't like that voice. <laughs> it sounds a bit creepy, don't you think? Turn right onto Winchester Road. Then, in 300 feet, you will arrive at Winchester Road. Okay, well there it is, a shell station. You have arrived at Winchester Road. So we actually have 32%, uh, 41 miles on the GOM. And it doesn't... Uh, so we've got this little battery symbol up here. Remember, that's not telling me anything, is it? Oh, actually, so it's, there's 33% that we'd get here with. Um, and to charge up to 63%, which should take 15 minutes. RFID card. No, left, okay, you'd think you'd have to do that, but no, right. Is that right? Right. Now I see that's highlighted it. <laughs> I can do user interfaces, can't I? So I don't know if this is low enough to get maximum power, but if the charging gods are smiling on me, then we'll get 85 kilowatts. But I really don't think it's low enough to get that. So what happens with electric car batteries is if you get them low enough in terms of state of charge, and then you start blamming in all of that electricity at a very high power, then the battery gets warmer, and the warmer the battery gets, the faster it can then charge. Now I don't know if this is gonna happen in this case, because I didn't get it low enough. Great. So it's at 49 kilowatts power. And yeah, the maximum the car will do is 85. So it's possible it might, the car might want a little bit more power. But um, as it stands, that's what happens. Battery gets hotter and the charging power should go up. And yes, it does mean uh, a lot of people get really confused when they go to a charger. And, you know, they look at the charger and it says, oh, wow, 150 kilowatts, brilliant. And, you know, you might go to a charger with an Ionic 5, which charges, that will take all of that 150. And you might be wondering, well, why on earth isn't it take, getting the 150? Well, it's because the battery is probably too cold, especially on a cold day, and especially if you don't get the battery low enough. So lower you get the state of charge, the more likely you'll get a high charging speed. And there we go. I'd like to say that was a little bit of physics for you, but I don't know anything about physics. And um, I don't know much about electric cars either, really. I don't know why you're watching the channel. There we go, 54 kilowatts. So it's starting to want a little bit more power. It's a bit cold, so I've got my jacket on. Now, the good thing about petrol stations, of course, is you know that they're open 24-7 a lot of the time. And you also know they've got toilet facilities and you can normally buy sandwiches and things like that. So. It's really good, actually, having chargers at petrol stations. I mean, it needs to happen more often. And really, they need more than one charger. 
But then again, motorway services do get pre-packed, as I found yesterday. They get pre-packed with people. So going off the beaten track a little bit can sometimes work in your favour. 54 kilowatts at the moment. So you might be wondering, if the charges on the motorway are only 50 kilowatts, is it really worth doing the detour and only getting 54 kilowatts here when I could get 50 kilowatts if I stay on the motorway? And yeah, it was a good point. So firstly, one of the reasons is, well, I get free charging with Onto with Shell. So that's point number one. And secondly, there is a chance that I would be waiting on the motorway because they are usually pretty busy. And unfortunately, also at the moment, GridServe, um, they're the ones on the motorways, they're not always that reliable, unfortunately. It's a shame because GridServe is a company, they're fantastic, and they've kind of, they've come along and done amazing things. They've taken over Electric Highway, uh, which was uh, Ecotricity. Ecotricity used to run all the chargers, they were rubbish. GridServe have come in, put in new chargers, and they are better, much better, but still a lot of people do have problems. So actually, a Shell Recharge charger, I would probably trust more than GridServe on the motorway, as it stands. Um, but that said, I did charge at a GridServe the other day, and it was absolutely fine on one of their newer ones, their 350 kilowatt ones. But yeah, so unfortunately at the moment, you need to, there's a bit of mental gymnastics really, isn't there, in terms of driving an EV. Um, obviously, at, you know, one day in the future, in the near future, hopefully, we'll be able to just go to a motorway services and just there'll be a massive bank of charges and you won't have to worry. But we're not there yet, sadly. And I suppose the other thing that you might be wondering is why don't I just wait here and charge up to 85% or something like that, whatever it would be, to be able to get home. And again, valid point I could do, but then obviously you're just waiting here for a long time and it's very slow, any EV gets slower the closer you get to 100% and especially this I'd think probably after 80 maybe 80% it probably slows down quite a lot so you're kind of wasting time a little bit really when it's better to drive and then charge somewhere else so that's why now at this point at 61% we've dropped down to 42 kilowatts and this you see is why pump recommend that I just go after a while and then get on to Ionity and get to Ionity with 10% and if you go onto the FastNed website, FastNed's a fantastic charging network, they've got what's called the charging curves for all of the cars, and you can see at what point you're gonna get what power. Now, I don't know whether it's just because the battery is you know, still a bit cold, and that's why we've only got 42 kilowatts then, because I would still kind of expect that to be higher, really. But who knows? So just as pump um, predicted, actually, I got to 63% state of charge in 15 minutes. So it was spot on there. Um, so now it says it would be the time to leave and go to Ionity. So I'm just going to give it a little bit, we're at 66%, 67% now. I'm just going to give it a little bit of time just in case the efficiency is worse on the motorway. Now what's really good about pump on the app is, um, and this is not in CarPlay of course, but on the app you do get lots of other information. So it, it tells you what it expects based on your average speed. So like 56 mile an hour, I think, um, average speed it's, it's assuming on the motorway, which is really good. But it does mean that if the motorway is pretty clear and you're doing the full 70 miles an hour, then actually it's not gonna be that good, the efficiency. Okay, well that's good enough for me. It's not even that far to get to Ionity, so it's kind of a bit silly, I suppose, waiting this long. Charge ended. Thank you very much. Don't know why it's not working. It's stuck. I'm not gonna use this. I'm gonna to go to Apple Maps. Okay, so I'm using Apple Maps instead because I can't be bothered with <laughs> pump uh, anymore. So I'm gonna do add stop. Uh, charging station. See how many charging stations there are around. You know, quite a few, really. And in fact, it doesn't even show Ionity because I'm too far away from it. So, um, Cobb. Oops. This is why I should just do Siri, shouldn't I? There we go. Where would you like to go? 
Cobham Services. One possibility is that those on the M25 in Cobham. There we go. Let's stop. Hopefully, by the time I get there, there'll be some charges available. So we're almost there. Okay, two out of six, it says, are available. This is on the shell recharge. So, let's see if that's actually the case. So, here we go. Got a queue. Good old Ionity is packed and they're probably slow as well. <laughs> but anyway, so we've got here with 27%, 34 miles left of range. So the problem is that I think all of them seem to be on quite a low state of charge. So they're going to be here for ages. Do I stay here or do I try and go somewhere else? I mean, probably better to stay here because at least there are six chargers, but I think they're probably going quite slow. If they're, if they're going, if they're as bad as they were yesterday. And there are grid surf chargers down there, but they're going to be busy as well. There's a Mercedes just leaving now. So uh, there's an Audi that's going to go in their place. Yeah, not really good enough, is it? The problem is that there are just so few options um, around. At least in this area. Um, some parts of the country are much better. But um, but here, I mean, if I, if I look on ZapMap, and I follow the motorway all the way along and down to sort of Canterbury Way. There really aren't many options at all. I could, you know, I could try and then I could perhaps get a charger somewhere. But then if you're reliant on one charger, one rapid charger, you know, a single one, then, you know, and maybe if that's occupied for, could be occupied for 40 minutes, you never know how, how long someone's going to be on there for. So then it makes no sense. So then it kind of think, well, it is better to just stay here. But I can see from here that they're charging so slowly here. I don't want to be down on uh, on EVs or, or, you know, at all, obviously. But um, I, you know, I understand the frustration that people have with the charging infrastructure because EVs are great, of course. It's the infrastructure that's the issue. We we just need more chargers. That's all there is to it. Yeah, e-tron. Oh, and now another Fiat 500e. Has also joined the fun. Oh, okay, I need to get ready to go, don't I? I need to pounce. All right, 25%. Okay. All right, start. Please don't be free. Please don't be a free one. Okay, good. Nice and fast, please. What are we going to get? Is it going to be a good Ionity or a bad Ionity today? It's going to be a good Ionity. Okay, straight in at 54. I think it might go higher. There we go. Look at that. Seventy-one now. They're struggling over there, so I'll go over and help them. Oh God, how awful is that? So there was the, the guy that um, whose spot I took has a leaf. In fact, they are charging by the looks of it now, and he didn't know that you can't charge a leaf at Ionity. Oh dear, that's awful, isn't it? So he was waiting for forty minutes in the queue, and then he couldn't even charge there. But luckily, he's gone straight into the grid server, and it looks like he's charging. So that's a relief. Oh, it shouldn't be this difficult, really, should it? Okay. Let's see what we got. 64%. Okay. I mean, obviously, I don't want to take too much time here, just because I know there are people waiting. I'll maybe give it another five minutes and then go. A better route planner always used to be pretty accurate, but um, looking at the plan now on a better route planner, it thinks that I could stop. Well, I'm at 70% at the moment, and it thinks I could go now and get home with 10%. Pump is far more pessimistic actually. So Pump seems to think that I would still need to charge on the way back home if I left here with 80%, which I'll have in eight minutes. But um, yeah, I think it's fine. I think I'll just, I think I'll go for it. When I get to 80%, I'll go for it. All right, I'm sure that's gonna be fine. <laughs> okay, so 83%, um, 125 miles. And to get home, 74 miles. So surely that's fine. Okay, so we're back home. 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour was efficiency in the end. Um, I've been traveling for far too long and 24% battery with 29 miles left. So what have we learned from this trip then? I think we've learned that the route planning apps are not that great. Um, they're fine when you're getting a rough idea of where you want to go, um, but not brilliant when you're actually in the car using them. That said, the um, things like Shell Recharge and WhatsApp um, and plug share are pretty good when you're actually driving along because you can quite easily find chargers then. But the thing that's really surprised me is actually Apple Maps built in 
um, charge finding thing is actually pretty good when you're already navigating in something like Apple Maps to actually just be able to add a charger in there is really good. Whether you can get that in your car, I don't know because I've I've never seen that. I've used CarPlay a lot and I've never seen that function. So it could be that it's just special with the Fiat 500e and that it tells CarPlay that uh, it's electric car and therefore show the charging stations if that's possible. Uh, what else have we learned? We've learned that um, a small battery car like the Fiat 500e is not perhaps best suited for long journeys simply because it does involve charging quite a bit on a cold day like this. It's not brilliantly efficient, is it? And that said, it is really fun to drive and it's absolutely fine most of the time. And really, it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me too much about charging on the way, on the go, um, if the chargers didn't um, involve a massive queue like they did today. Um, so I think it's been a kind of a, it's a mixed trip, isn't it? It's uh, We've had some highlights, we've had some issues, but overall it's fine. And, you know, I've enjoyed driving the Fiat. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please press subs... The, I can't even talk now. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And uh, clearly I need to sleep a little bit now. Well, in fact, I need to eat first, actually, and then I'll sleep. So, bye for now. Thank you very much. Bye.